Hey, this is Gail. I'm teaching this chair yoga dance today for Veterans Yoga Project Gratitude Week. If you've signed up for the class, I'll be sending you an email after class with the fundraiser uh, link if you so desire to donate towards this class. Either way, it's okay. You don't have to donate. Um, I just, you know, really like to present these classes for Veterans Yoga Project. My goal this year is to raise $500. Um, I think in the past I've raised um, $300, $200, that type of thing. So this year I was going to get lofty in my ideals. So I already have, let's see here, $300 donated for this particular uh, fundraiser class. So I'm very excited. Today also is the birth of the Marines. So yay, November 10th. Um, back when, whenever that was, I think it's 147 years ago. So yay. So today's class, it's going to be approximately 20 minutes of seated chair yoga. Then we'll transition to doing seated cardio fitness. And then the last part will be doing some balance, some strength, some guided rest relaxation, and our gratitude practice. One of the postures I want to come up and just tell you about right now is called the golfer's grip. It's basically where we're going to take our hand <clears throat> and fold it into the pad of the hand. We're going to do the same with the other side. Now, I can't quite get the ones down on my right hand, but I can on my left hand. This is going to help us strengthen the upper back when we do some of the postures in the third part of this class. I also teach yoga for bone building, the 12 yoga postures for uh, easing osteopenia, osteoporosis. So we'll kind of mix some of those in with this class today. They'll be the modified version since we're seated on the chair. I have been teaching chair yoga probably since the second year I ever started teaching. My first class was for the bariatric patients over at Citizens Health Plex there in Victoria, Texas. They wanted to have a gentle class but something that was very mindful and let them relax and kind of release the stress they would have prior and after their surgeries. All right, enough being said. I'm going to stand up Transition to the chair. At the end, I'll come back up to the camera just to give you all a little predictability, let you know what's going on. So I'm going to move this chair out of the way. And I do have a, a, a little cold going on today, so forgive my, <laughs> forgive my coldness. My coldness. <laughs> all right, I'm going to scooch this forward a little bit. So one of the things we do in a veteran yoga project class, so we do breathing, meditation, mindful movement, guided rest and relaxation, and a gratitude practice. This one's a little different because there is music in the class. Typically in a veteran yoga project class, we don't have music, but this one, this class has been given special permission to be presented today. All right, so, um, so I'm here at the very edge of my chair, so I invite you to come up to the very edge of your chair and try to have your feet kind of in alignment with your knees so you don't have them more forward or kind of tucked in. So they're at this kind of a 90 degree angle here. And just kind of notice, are you leaning a little bit more forward? Are you leaning back? What I invite you to do is have the shoulders over the hips as best you can. If it doesn't feel comfortable, then you sit however is best for you today. So first what we'll do is call the extended exhale breath. The extended exhale breath is great for, let me think here, lowering your blood pressure and for reducing your heart rate and if you have a little bit of like a sudden anxiety in, in, encountering, it helps with that too. I often use it when I go to the dentist because I don't, <laughs> I don't like to be in the dentist chair, yeah? And so I'll do the extended exhale breath to just kind of calm myself down. So yeah, that's a, that's a good thing. So from here, um, go ahead and go to the back of your chair. Just get a little comfortable pressing to the back of the chair. And I invite you either to gaze your eyes down at the floor or close your eyes. Again, whatever is best comfortable for you today. And I'm going to tuck my chin a little bit in towards my chest. And I'm going to keep my eyes open just so I can see if, you know, when people come into the room. All right. So from here, let's breathe in. The belly expands. And as we exhale, draw the belly button towards the spine. If you want to make that little noise in the back of the throat as you breathe in and as you breathe out. Now we're going to add the extended part to this. 
So let's breathe in to a count of four. And slowly breathe out to a count of five. Again, breathing in, belly big. I can't quite do that one. <laughs> and exhale, count of four. I often breathe through the mouth so you can hear the breath. Again, breathing in. And slowly exhaling out. Beautiful. Let's shift once again to the front of the chair. <clears throat> From here, um, we're going to be bringing one foot towards me. So the heel flex, toes towards your knees. Let's scoot back a little bit. I don't see that in the camera too much. Very good. Okay, there we go. And so this is a passive hamstring uh, lengthener kind of thing going on. Sometimes you can feel spice going on in that side booty, in the back of the leg, the hamstrings. You can feel a tightening happening in the quadricep. Definitely tightening in the calves, bottoms of the feet. Again, I invite, I invite you to you know, really flex the heel, toes towards you. Now, if this is kind of bothersome for the knees, bend the knee a little bit, but keep that flex of the heel going on. And then sit up tall. I sometimes bring my hands back behind me, kind of squeeze those shoulders here. And let's breathe in through the nose and out through the nose. Again, inhaling and exhaling. Let's release that, grab that leg, bring it in. And let's do the other side. So bring that other leg out, wiggle it, shake it out. I take a little time to get it out there. And again, flex that heel, toes towards your nose. And what you're going to notice here, does it feel different on this side versus the other? So for me, this is my very tightly held side because of the, the curve that goes on with my spine. So I find this to be a little bit more flexible than the other one. One side feels loosey-goosey. This side feels very tight. But again, um, you know, we're going to do what we can uh, with what's going on with our bodies. Sitting up tall, again, hands can be back behind you. Don't forget to breathe. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Now, runners often do this particular stretch before they do their little running activity or afterwards. That's a nice one to do. To kind of really get into those calves, the hamstrings, the quadriceps, a little bit of the hip flexors here. And release. Hand underneath, bring that leg back in. Just kind of shake the legs a little bit. That's good for lymphatic drainage when you shake body parts. You know, our blood system, you know, naturally circulates, right? But the lymph nodes don't have vehicles to let go of their waist. So the way we do that is through movement. So shaking the legs, shaking the arms helps with that. Next is a posture I like to call yoga slide. We just take our hands underneath our knee pit. Sit up tall and slide it out to the side and back. So this is a functional movement. We do this all the time when we get in and out of the car, whether we're the driver or the passenger. Yeah, Kind of gets into the, all the little nooks and crannies and that, that hip bone also. So again, this is to increase mobility in the joints, which is a good thing. <laughs> I feel some little snappy, poppy things going on with my hip bone today. Now we're going to add on to this. Pretend there's a golf ball down here. And you don't want to kick the golf ball out of the way. You want to hop over the golf ball. It's called air pose, yoga air. So basically you lift it up and bring it back. Now if that's too spicy, go back to air posture. Yeah? I think I actually I'm jumping over a soccer ball today. <laughs> when I teach this class uh, in, in person, I say, okay, thank you for cleaning my floors with your feet today. And they just kind of get a little laugh out of that. But, you know, I tell the same jokes every time, and they still keep laughing. I don't know what their problem is. <laughs> All right, two more. Here we go. And, of course, I can't count. Coming back to the center. Yeah. All right, we're going to do the air posture on the other side. So slide it out. Ooh, pop. My hip just popped and back in. Of course, I'm working with carpet here. So I'm feeling the sensation of carpet along the bottom of my feet. 
maybe yours is a tile or a wood floor and you're feeling the sensation of the floor underneath you, unless you have your shoes on. Having shoes on is perfectly fine also. Just know that, okay? And then add some air to it. And again, notice, notice, does this feel different on this side versus the first side we did? Just to make a little observation because, again, even though we have things the same on both sides of the body, you know, we have arms and legs, that doesn't mean the arms and legs are acting the same due to maybe a, a car accident or, you know, an injury and in doing a sports or maybe you fell, that kind of thing. Yeah. Woo. One more. And release. All right. Shake them out a little bit. All right. Next is called the piriformis bounce and seated pigeon. So this one's kind of spicy. It can be. So we're going to be cautious here. So the first uh, level of this is to cross at the ankle and just kind of let that knee dangle out. And I'm going to move my booty a little bit because that feels kind of weird on my behind. And basically, we're going to shake the leg. So the piriformis is the muscle that wraps around the behind. It's often the culprit for sciatica, the shooty pain down the leg or up the low back. Sometimes that sciatica nerve is entrapped in the piriformis muscle or on the side, or it's kind of getting pinched in the pelvic notch. So again, this warms up the musculature before we kind of really work it out. Yeah, we're going to work it out today. Now, if you want to take it up to the next level, always optional, all right? So it would be grabbing that leg that's in front and bring it on top of your woo, <laughs> other leg. So I'm already feeling like lots of grabby stuff going on here. I'm going to move my bottom leg out a little bit. Now, the top foot, I'm going to be doing toes towards my knee so that calf is activated, sitting up tall. I'm feeling some spice in this pose. When you're feeling spice in a yoga posture, return your attention back to your breath. So breathe in. Breathe out. Again, inhaling and exhaling. Now, if you want to add a little more, if you have the hand on the shin, have the hand on the top of that foot, elbows out, and hinge a little forward. I've got a little spice going extra there, right there on the side uh, of my um, my leg, the leg that's on top. Now, come out of that, yay, undo the, the higher pigeon, go back to here and just kind of shake that leg out. we got to do all that same stuff on the other side, of course, right? So, whew, bring that one across and start kind of moving that leg a little bit. And again, I'm going to move my bun a little bit. Yay for air conditioners in South Texas. <laughs> Again, I've got a little cold, so I don't want to get a little bit too overheated. And then if you want to go to the next level, slide it up on top. Ooh, this one feels a little tight today. Again, you kind of notice, okay, does this leg seem to be more towards your chest or more away naturally? Toes towards your knees, sit up tall. And then if you want a little more, hand on a shin, hand on the top of the foot, bend those elbows, hinge a little forward. So I can hinge a little bit forward. This is what I'm noticing on this side versus the other side. Again, this is my kind of the loosey-goosey side. I have a little bit more flexibility, and this one's the tightly held side. My quadris lumboris muscle holds my spine in a manner to where it curves my spine. Didn't realize I had scoliosis till after I went through menopause and all that. So it's like, wow. Um, so through the years of, you know, I was remembering about back pain. It could have been because of that, yeah. But apparently it wasn't prevalent enough to people going, oh, you know, one hip's higher than the other, that type of thing. And release. Yay, take that leg off, shake it out. Very good. All right, so these movements are to get us ready for the main part of the class, the chair yoga dance. So stuff to do with the legs, the hips. Now we work with the shoulders. So I'm going to scoot my booty over a little bit. And then that way my arm won't be hitting the chair when we do the movements for the arms. So basically what we're going to do, we're going to hang on to the chair with one hand. With the other one, draw an oval. <clears throat> 
This one is often used for physical therapy, this particular um, yoga movement, for if you've had an implant or a pacemaker or ICD or a shoulder surgery, it's called the arm dangle. Make that oval go the other way. Now, just to add some complexity to this, to challenge our brain, to lessen that Alzheimer's stuff, we're going to draw a, uh, we're going to do a cursive number eight. So think about that. Draw a cursive number eight, the normal way that you would draw the number eight. Or if, you know, that doesn't resonate with you, maybe those little matchbox car raceway, that track that was in a shape of a, that eight. I'm dating myself, I know. <laughs> Although my grandson plays with something very similar. Now stop in the middle and go the other direction. That's usually where my brain kind of goes, ooh. So we're increasing neuroplasticity when we do this. I cannot say that word. Neuroplasticity. Here we go. I always think about, you know, I go to Marble Slab Creamery and I'm sitting here, ooh, they got to get that ice cream nice and kind of not frozen, so they gotta move that little ladle around to get the ice cream uh, kind of melted a little bit. So this is what I think about when I do this figure eight. And release. We're gonna go over to the other side. So scoot your booty over to the other side. Let's draw that number eight on the other side. Here we go. This one feels easier for me to do in this shoulder, by the way, versus the other shoulder. We've got my pacemaker over here on this side. And this side does not have the pacemaker, so I don't have like a limitation in my range of motion or how it feels in my body. Yeah. If I started with the figure eights, did you start with the figure eights? <laughs> Let's do the ovals if you if you haven't done them. I just went right into the figure eights. How about that? That's okay. And reverse. I can hear my shoulder pop in here, little clicky sounds. That's okay, it didn't hurt, it just makes a weird noise. And go and do other direction, whether it's a figure eight or an oval. I'm just gonna let you do freestyle, how about that? <laughs> Very good. <clears throat> All right, come back to the center. Let's do a little bit of meditation um, before we go right into the chair yoga dance. So what we'll do it's called mountain pose. We can do this seated in the chair. So the palms are facing forward. They're relaxed. The fingers are relaxed. Shoulders down the back of the spine. And as we inhale, let's gather in the arms to the front of our body. Exhale, raise them up to the shoulders. Inhale, open outwards. Squeeze those shoulders. Exhale, contract the arms inward. Inhale, let's flow it towards the chest. Exhale, flow forward. Inhale, let's descend. Exhale, disperse out. Let's do that again. Inhale, gather in. Exhale, rise. Inhale, open up. Squeeze those shoulders. Exhale, contract the arms inward. Inhale, flow towards the chest. Exhale, flow it forward. Inhale, dis descend. Exhale, disperse out. On the next inhale breath, inhale, circle sweep arms up. Keep one arm up, one hand down on the chair as you exhale, then inhale, really reach. Now on your exhale, contract that belly button towards the spine and bring the arm overhead, our side lateral movement. Inhale, back on up. Exhale, arm down. Let's once again, inhale, circle sweep arms up. Other arm stays up, other arm goes down as you exhale. Inhale, really reach up towards the sky. Exhale, belly button towards the spine as you stretch that side body over. Inhaling back on up. Exhale down. 
All right, so that was movements one and two, side movements. We're going to also do cat-cow. I'm going to show this sideways because I teach this a little bit different seated on the chair versus other people. And that's because of the gentle low back uh, class that I teach. So again, I'm coming, I'm scooching up towards the, the edge of my chair. I have lots of good space here between my booty and the back of the chair. And I try to have the shoulders over in the direction of my hips. So I'm not leaning forward. I'm not leaning back. And then my ears just kind of naturally sometimes lines up with my shoulders. Sometimes it juts out though because of texting, yeah? So try to chin in to have ears over the shoulders, shoulders over the hips. Hands on the thighs, those knees at a nice 90 degree angle. Let's breathe in. And as we exhale, contract that belly button and hinge forward. This is cow posture. Inhaling, stay here. As we exhale, contract that belly button, come back to tall mountain. Inhaling, stay here. Exhale to the back of the room. Hang on to those knees, cat posture. There's a little pelvic tilt happening here when we do this. Inhaling, stay here. Exhale, come back to tall posture. You notice that little tilt happening, the little flaring of the tailbone? I bet you do. Inhaling, stay here. Last time, exhale, hinge forward. I try to keep my ears over my shoulders. Inhaling, stay here. Exhale, back to tall posture. Belly button towards the spine. Inhaling, stay here. Exhale, let's curve to the back of the room. Big old letter C happening with our spine. Beautiful. Inhaling, stay here. Exhale, back to tall posture. Beautiful. I'm going to come up to the camera and we're going to get started on the cardio fitness portion of the class. Let me get my chair right smack there in the middle there and make sure I have lots of room where you can see my feet when we do this next part. <coughs> Yay. So Lynn and Sandy, we're going to do this next part. And of course, all the other people that signed up want the video. It's coming your way eventually. <laughs> all right. Let's see. I got everything going. All right, so this is about 20, 21 minutes of cardio fitness. Do what you can. If you get mixed up, just follow me. Listen to my cues. Just keep breathing. Just keep moving. Always keep it between the easy and the ouch. All right. That's my signal to get ready. <laughs> Let's march and maybe some snaps. Keep going. We do opposite arm and lay out. Sit up tall. Side to side movement here. Shake it down. Let's do that again. Here we go. Side to side. Four, 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 three, two, one. Switch the leg. Keep going. Side to side. Here we go. Shake. Jazz hands up. Breathe in. Woo. Side to side. Here we go. Come forward for four. Here we go. Four. Three. Two. And one. Switch. Side to side. Shake. Tiny. Barely any Side to side right here. Tiny little shakes. Alright, bigger with bigger. Here we go. Woo. Maybe take the arms low. Side to side. Here we go. Shake. Breathe in. Very good. 
gonna turn the music down just a little bit. Next is Proud Mary. Listen to the story now. I'm gonna turn that. Now we can take a leg out and in. Do two more. Let's switch sides. The leg goes out and in. There's wheels on the steamboat. Next is lasso it up. Other side, other side. Here we go. And just get that arm going. Ah, back to the beginning. Here we go. Reach it out. That's good. I'm kind of in my working zone. Next is Do You Love Me? You broke my heart because I couldn't dance. You didn't even want me around. Nope, you didn't. And now I'm back to let you know I can really shake them down. Arms up. Here we go. Do you love me? Now. Do you love me? legs. Push it away. Push, push. Other side. 
strength and balance. So remember before, catch your breath too. Heart rate 116. So we just did three quarters of a mile, by the way, with this particular 20 minutes and a half workout. Good stuff. Notice your heart rate's probably up. Yeah. Okay. So from here, we're going to fold those fingers into the pads of the hands. And so kind of figure out what that is. And we'll use this in just a second. Let's do seated warrior two. So I'm going to kind of scooch over to one side of my chair because I'm going to take a leg, step a leg out to the side, and then have a leg pointed towards you. So I naturally kind of turn towards the center when this happens, because that's kind of where my torso is, my hips, right? But I invite you to turn your torso out and over the leg that's in front. Now to make this bone building, osteopenia, osteoporosis prevention, or to build bone, you have to be vigorous in your posture, even seated on the chair. So feet are just here right now, right? So push firmly into the floor to where you feel your quadriceps being activated, the stuff around the knees, the calves, maybe the inner thighs. And then take those hands, fold those fingers in, do the arms at a letter T. Again, torso out and over the leg that's in front of you. Now with these hands, I have my thumbs up. I'm going to bring my thumbs forward and draw circles, arm circles, forward and back behind me as I vigorously push into the floor with my warrior two feet. So this helps with bilaterally kind of getting into the hips. You kind of have this little oscillation happening with the upper body, the lower body. And this strengthens the upper back muscles. And release. Relax everything. Beautiful. All right, from here we're going to take that leg that we stepped out, bring it back to the center. We're going to do the other side. So I'm going to scooch over to the other side of the chair. Step the foot out. 
And again, my torso naturally turns to the center. I'm going to invite it to turn over the leg in front of you, pressing firmly into my heels, those little golfer grip hands, arms letter T. So before my thumbs are forward, now bring the thumbs up and then back behind you. Press into the floor, draw the circles behind you and forward. Keep breathing. Press into the floor. I always lose my feet. So I imagine everybody else does too. And release. Whew, very good. All right. From here, <clears throat> we can turn sideways on our chair with our booty sticking off a little bit. And I'm going to scoop my behind kind of to the back end of my chair. This leg that's in front of the chair, I'm going to bring it in front of me and readjust my bottom a little bit and have myself have curly toes. So I'm trying to have my hips, my shoulders over my hips here. Now I'm going to press firmly into the forward heel and to, into those back toes. If I want this to be more, I can think about squeezing the side booty squeeze and then pushing my quadricep forward a little bit. So really getting into those hip flexors. To make this more of a back bend, I can raise an arm up or both arms, but I'm hanging onto the chair with the one hand. Breathe. And release. You know, we do something on one side, we gotta do the other side. So you slowly transition over onto the other side. Bring that leg back. Again, one side may feel a little different than the other, yeah? If you can, press into those back curly toes, press into that forward foot, shoulders over the hips. If you want it, you squeeze the side booty or the behind and you shift your front of the leg forward a little bit. Arm can go up. Press into the floor vigorously. Got to stay there for about 30 seconds to get that bone building benefit. You stimulate the large muscle groups, that stimulates bone growth. So that's the formula behind the 12 yoga postures for easing osteopenia, osteoporosis. Whew. And release. Beautiful. Let's come back to the center here. So basically we're going to press into the floor, bringing the feet more into the front side of our chair. I have the hands on the side of the chair and make sure my feet are pointing at 12 o'clock. <coughs> and then I'm going to lift my booty up and hover. So this is chair posture and releasing. Now another way to do that is stand up and then just hover before you get down on the floor. But for some folks, they're not able to do that version. Some folks aren't even able to lift off the chair. But you can build strength back by doing chair postures. You press into the floor with your feet, squeeze those thighs, squeeze the glutes, lift off, press into the chair to lift off and stay there. You might feel some shaking going on. And release. That usually kicks up the heart rate really fast because, you, again, you're using those major muscle groups. Let's do that one more time. I also call this the hover pose. We have a... Um, Heritage Festival here in Texas, a fair, and I think about the nastiest porta potty, porta potty, right? And I don't want to put my behind on that, so I hover. <laughs> keep your hover movements to keep your independence, yeah? All right, press into the floor, lift up. If you want to release the hands, you can. Or you can have fingertips on the chair or full hands on the chair, and then come back down. Whoop. Hopefully it wasn't a kerplop. If it was, you know, that's something that you need to work on, though, right? Lifting up and lowering down off and on the toilet. Functional movements to keep our independence. Or, you know, kind of helps us with that, yeah? Yeah. From here, I'm going to come up to the camera. And we're going to do our guided rest and relaxation and our gratitude practice. So I'm going to come up to the camera and get my other chair. So you have the option of coming down to the floor and laying on your back or one of the things I like to do, let me just demonstrate that, um, is legs on the chair posture. So I'll come over here to the chair and put my, my, my calves on the chair. This helps to further release the back. As this is an alternate to legs up the wall posture. And you just kind of feel the ground that supports you underneath. You can alternatively be in your chair and then just kind of really scooch back into the chair. Get comfortable. Maybe cross the ankles if you're seated in the chair. And 
And I'll do one of my little meditations here that I like to do. So as you're ready, get comfortable wherever that is for you at this moment. <coughs> We're just going to set a few moments just to be. So bring into your mind a theme today, an intention for your practice. Whatever it is you'd like to take away, concisely repeat it to yourself in positive present moment language. So maybe it's something like, I am calm, I am peace. For me, it's usually I am pain free or I am stress free. Something that's true for you. Something you're looking to gain from your practice today. And once you have set that theme, let's repeat it to ourselves three times. I'll do a little count off of 10 snaps while you repeat that. So let's do that. Good. And then we'll go into the body scan. So just allow yourself to take a nice deep breath and slowly exhale out. Let your awareness tra travel to the top of your head. Noticing the top of your head, allowing any places in your body as we're traveling through to release, relax, let go with each exhale. From the top of your head all the way, allowing any places in your body as we're traveling through to relax, release, let go. So let's scan our body all the way from the top of the head down to the tips of the toes. Notice your neck, your shoulders, your torso, your arms, hands, and fingers. Notice the hips, legs, feet, and toes. And then take a deep breath in, and as you let it out, relax, release, let go your whole body. And then let's bring some awareness into the breath. Allow that breath to get a little bit longer on the inhale. And a little bit longer on the exhale. Notice the quality of your breath. Let's notice the parts, the places of your body that are moving as you breathe in, as you breathe out. Letting that feeling of relaxation and releasing overcome you. Big breath in, big breath out. And now we'll work with opposite sensations, heavy versus light. Let's shift, shift our attentions to some sensations in the body, allowing yourself to feel very heavy, as heavy as a rock, like you could sink down into the floor. The arms and legs are heavy. The head is heavy. The torso is heavy the whole body heavy. Now let's flip that to feeling, a, sensing your body being as light as a feather. The arms are light, the legs are light, the body is light. The whole body is so light you feel like you're floating up towards the sky. Weightlessness, effortlessness, light. Let's go back to sensations. Maybe you're lying on the floor, maybe you're here in the chair. I invite you to notice all those places where your body touches the surface that supports you. Notice the fluids in the body. Notice that they flow calm and easy like a lazy river, but the fire that burns inside you is like a little pilot light. Maybe you're noticing your breathing free, flowing freely and softly. And then I invite you once again to repeat that theme, that intention that you set at the beginning of this practice. We're going to repeat it three times mentally to yourself. Here we go. Beautiful. Then allow yourself a nice deep breath. In through the nose, if you can, out through the mouth. Let it all go. And begin to wiggle those fingers, those toes. Come up to a tall seated place. Push into the floor, drag yourself up. Sometimes we can be a little dizzy when we come up off the floor. But if you were already in a chair, you probably don't have that challenge. Your hands can either be stacked upon your chest or the sides of the thumbs into your sternum. And I invite you to take your hands to your heart center, however that is for you, 
and a slight nod with your head forward in our internal gaze dwelling in that area somewhere in the heart. I invite you to see if you can find some place that feels like something of gratitude. And from that place, I invite you to silently acknowledge to yourself just one thing in your life that you're grateful for today. Thank you for practicing with me. So the light in me honors and respects the light in you. Let's take that peace, the strength, and the understanding, and that little attitude of gratitude, and let's pass it on. Namaste. And namaste means the light in me honors the light in you. This is Gail for Veterans Yoga Project. This was a class presented for Veterans Gratitude Week for raising funds to support our veterans, our communities. Thank you once again for your kind donations for making this effort to continue. Bye-bye.